God made a plan for you and me to be able to control the spiritual and the natural world. Now, I want to say that again, and I want you to grasp the weight of what I just said. God made a plan for you to be able through Him to control your spiritual and your natural world. Now, I want you to consider the gravity of that before I move forward because our world has this conception that God's plan for man was simply to save him and wait. God's plan for you as a Christian is to be saved and sit and wait. God's plan for you as a Christian is to be saved, stand in the face of the devil, handle the common things of life, and wait. Now I want you to think about that. That is how this thing is being taught. Just wait. Because one glad morning when this life is over, Jesus is going to come and get you. Just wait till then. That'll be a glad day, boy. We'll be all happy then. We'll jump around in heaven and, and we'll have it all when that happens. But God made a plan whereby you, through Him, could control the spiritual world and the natural world. We're going to look at that. How did he do it? Using the Lordship of Jesus Christ and how he interacts with you through Jesus Christ who is our man in the Godhead. So if you'll stand with me in honor the reading of God's Word, we'll start with Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 through 20. We will not get to Mark 16, 16 through 20 until tonight. And Jesus came and spoke, spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and earth. Now I could stop reading right there and preach. But if you look at what he just said, and we go back to my title, God's plan for controlling the spiritual and the natural world. Look at it again. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Huh. Isn't that amazing? That we have now moved from sit and wait to the fact that all power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore. Now watch this because it even gets better. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And what we did with that was we created baptistries and argued about do we baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost or do we baptize in the name of Jesus only? You know why? Because we never understood the Scripture. Teaching them to observe all things that whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Father, I thank you for the reading of your word. I pray that you would open our eyes that we could see, and our ears that we could hear, and our heart that we could understand what the word of God is saying to us. And then, let us apply it appropriately, succinctly, to our lives so that we can be changed into the image of your dear Son. Now, Father, we surrender ourselves, sanctify ourselves, and yield ourselves to be used by the Holy Spirit and to be used as you speak to the Holy Spirit. May we hear and then may we reveal, release what has been revealed to us. For all of this, we will give you praise and honor and glory in the lovely name of Jesus Christ, our high priest, our Lord, our man in the Godhead.
Amen and amen, and you may be seated. This is going to take a couple parts. Nothing that's worthwhile in the Word of God is spat out to you in three parts in a poem. I want you to get that right up front. Nothing that is worthwhile to you is spat out to you in three words in a poem. In order to understand what it is God has called His people to be, there has to be Him who proclaims the truth about the good news of the gospel. The good news of the gospel can be, can be titled as Jesus Christ. But that is not all of the good news. It is Him as High Priest, Lord, and our man in the Godhead. And I'm going to show you more about this next week whenever I begin preaching on the Christmas message. This week I had, as you probably know before I go there, this thing about lordship has been mulling in my heart for years. Not for months, not for days, but for years. The idea of the concept of him being the exalted Lord who is over everything in heaven, earth, and hell. When we look at the scripture, we see it readily identified in verse 18. We see him saying, I have come from heaven and I'm speaking to you from a different perspective than I spoke to you before I went away. I'm speaking to you from a new position. I've been given a new directive. And that directive is, is that all power that is in heaven and in earth is going, is given to me. It belongs to me now. How did he get it? Well, he went to the cross. He went to the tomb. He went to hell. He rose from the grave. He took the blood. We know this because this is all in scripture. He took the blood. There he produced the blood as the high priest in the tabernacle and then entered into the throne room of God where God crowned him as Lord. He then comes back and says to the apostles and the disciples, now all of everything has been given to me. Now what, I'm, what I've got, I'm giving to you. Well, prove that to me, pastor. Well, then all you got to do is look at verse 19. He said, go you now and teach all nations. Teach them about what, pastor? That I am in control of the spiritual world. Where do you see that, preacher? In verse 18. In verse 18, I see him say, I'm in control of heaven. I am in control of the natural world. Where do you see that, Pastor? In verse 18, he said, I'm in control of earth. Paul turned around and said that he was in control of everything in heaven, in earth, and under the earth. So there is no region of mankind or any place where mankind may be to which he is not in total control. God made a plan for himself through the lordship of Jesus Christ to be in total control of everything in the spiritual world and everything in the natural world. God made a plan for that man to say to you, Go ye into all the world and tell them, teach them. Teach them that I am the Lord over death and hell. Teach them that I am the Lord over my body and my blood. Teach them that all heaven bows the knee to me. Teach them that all hell, what did the devil say? Jesus I know and Paul I know. But who all hell, bows to me. The only area 
that does not bow is in the earth. That's why the angel said, What in the world of man that you're mindful of them? They're rebellious. They're egotistical. They're needy. But all earth can be brought under the dynamic influence of the control of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. All of it. Everything that has a name bows. Everything that has a knee bows. This week, while praying about this very situation, I did something I rarely, if ever, do. I prayed about it. I spent basically all day mulling, meditating, thinking on, reading, writing on the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And I was walking around the house barefooted, which I never do. I don't go anywhere without shoes on. Just don't do it. Why? Because my feet are so tender that every little thing I step on is a problem. So I just don't go barefooted. But I was praying, and I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. And I was walking around the corner, and I was in prayer. I mean, I was in prayer. I was, I was talking to God about the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And the next thing I know, I felt my foot smack into the wall, the door jam. My last three toes on my right foot. Now, how many of you have ever done that? Well, we all have stubbed our toe on something one time or another. Well, naturally, being a tenderfoot, my foot began to ache immediately, and I just put on my shoe and went on about my business. Went to work, came home, stumbled around there, and my foot began to hurt. I felt like I had a couple of rocks in the bottom of my foot. I mean, it was just not feeling good. And I said, now, I went all day and it hurt, but it did not have this right side, this feeling like it was puffing up and getting thick and heavy. And I said, now, here's a prime opportunity to find out about whether what I'm doing and praying on and seeking God concerning. Here's a prime chance, God. Now, if you are Lord over everything that has a name, then my toes have names and my foot has a name. And right now, those things that have a name are bothering me. So I begin to proclaim the Lordship of Jesus Christ over it. Now I want to tell you this before I finish. You have no need to worry if you know Him as Lord. You have no power if you do not. If you stay in the process that the church today wants you to live in and be saved and wait, you have no power. You have no authority because you have never come into the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Now watch what I'm about to tell you. Jesus Christ did something for you internally that you can't deny. Internally, Jesus healed you from sin, transgression, and physical and, and spiritual death. He saved you. He took you to the tomb and preserved you. He took you to hell and delivered you and pronounced that internally you are now eternal. Now think about what I just said. Internally you are now eternal. And you can live your entire life on that. 
You can live your entire life on what He has done through grace by faith and that not of your own, but the gift of God. You can live your entire life knowing that your internal self is eternal. Now what's going to happen to you? You're going to live through the common things of life. You're going to go through the temptations that are common. You're going to live under the attacks of the devil that are common. You're going to live under the times whenever your life is put under the pressure of having to make a decision about temptation and whether you're going to live above it and beyond it and live for Christ or you're going to be uh, 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 trapped in it and then brought captive to it and then have to be brought back to the altar of guilt and shame and repent of it and pull yourselves up and try to move forward. The common things of life. You can stay in the works of healing, preservation, and deliverance and wait. You can wait. During that wait time, there will be many tears. There will be many battles. There will be battles won, and there will be battles lost. The battles won will not be great. The battles lost will be devastating. <laughs> they will drive you to the brink of your faith. The battles that you lose are going to be the battles that are going to take you to the very brink of saying, where are you, God, and why, God, are you not doing for me what I have seen you do for others and what I have seen you do in your word? It'll take you to the brink. And the brink is the brink of devastation. It's the brink where your faith stands in the balance. Yes, there's a brink. There's a place where if you just stay in healing, preservation, and deliverance, the, the common things of man are going to attack you. They're going to attack you. What are those common things? You could name them because you've heard me say them a million times. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. The common things. But God said... Through Paul, that God has made a way of escape so that you can be able to bear it. Now we go back to my foot problem. So here I am with my foot messing up because I was in prayer. And the devil tried to jerk me out of prayer. And I stubbed my foot, three toes on the right side, into the door jam. Now I don't know about you. And I'm a, I've got a nice pain tolerance. But those little toes, they don't do so well with pain. Huh? They, they just don't. So I said, Lord, here is your opportunity. This, I, I'm bringing my foot to you as Lord. You are Lord over my foot. Why? Because my foot has a name. It's a foot. My toes have a name. Their toes, the bones, the muscle, the tissue, the veins, they all have a name. And the Bible says that at the Lordship of Jesus Christ, everything that has a name has a knee. That's what it said. It said everything that has a name has a knee. In other words, it can be brought under the submission of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That is, this is God's plan to control both the spirit world and the natural world. Now, internally, this did not matter to my salvation. It didn't matter whether I was saved or not. I'm preserved internally. I'm prepared internally. If the foot banging the wall had caused me to die, I would have gone to heaven. But it didn't. I didn't die from it. I was left to deal with it. See? I didn't die from this attack. I was left to deal with it. Now what am I going to do? Since I'm not going to die from it, there has to be a means in the spirit world for me to use the benefits of salvation, which are His Lordship, to bring about 
his on-site, active, and immediate control of the natural world. So, I laid there in bed and I said, Now, Lord, you, you'd have gone on with this and your Lord. I commend this to you. I confess that you are Lord over my foot. I confess and agree that you are the Lord who makes every knee bow. I approve. Now watch it now. I approve of how you are going to handle this situation for me based on your Lordship. I approve of that. Therefore, what can I do, Lord? I can cast every care on you for you care for me. I don't have to worry about it anymore. Now that sounds like super hyper faith, but it's not. It is the methodology God used, planned and prepared for the ones who will live in His Lordship to be able to speak out of, now watch me now, the things that they know they possess. Now what is it that you know you possess? Things you don't even understand. You possess Him as healer. You possess Him as preserver. You possess Him as deliverer. Now, if you know you possess those three things, then you also possess Him as, high, as priest and become a priest under His kingdom. Now you walk into His Lordship. Now, the first four things are all done in your eternal makeup, in your inner man. The next two things are done in your external Makeup. The Lordship of Jesus Christ begins to deal with things that are outside the spiritual world. The things that are common to you, that affect you, that attack you, that hurt you. And when you come under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, all of a sudden there is a means for the natural to be controlled by Him. The spiritual, having already been possessed, can now step over into his lordship, and in his lordship, guess what? My foot went to perfection. I got up the next morning, I didn't have a lip, limp, I didn't put any ice on it, I didn't do anything to, to, to uh, address it, I didn't try to medically help God along. Nothing wrong with that, not saying that there is. But trying to share with you the concept that in His Lordship, which is a benefit of salvation, you are brought under the benefit of Him being in dominion, control, total dominion, that brings you into the ability, and I'm going to show it to you in just a second, for you to reign in this life. God has made a plan whereby man can control the spirit world and the natural world. Look at, look at my writing. The believer was meant, it was God's plan and purpose for you, through the plan of salvation, in coordination with the Lordship of Jesus Christ and the man in the Godhead bodily, to be able to use His Lordship to believe and surrender to His Lordship and your spiritual and supernatural environment come under the control of His Lordship. Now think with me, think with me, think with me. Every one of you in this room are saved. What you have done is you have surrendered your eternal future to what Jesus Christ did. You don't argue about that. You don't wonder about that. Your life has been changed. So you don't even think about, am I going to heaven when I die? You don't wonder. But you stop right there, and wait. Now the Scripture is telling us that, according to Matthew chapter 28, Jesus came and said, all power is given to me. Now He did not tell you here to wait. Look at the Word. He did not tell you to sit. 
He did not tell you to hold on. He did not tell you to tie a knot in the end of the rope and dangle until I'm ready. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Now watch what he said, because this is critical. He said, from here, take my lordship, because that's what's been given to me, all power and all authority in heaven and earth. He did not say to me, just live off of my lordship. He said, now when you go, teach all nations. Teach them about what? Teach them about the power that's given to me in heaven and earth. But then he makes another statement that we took into the concept of dunking people underwater. And we cannot come under a complete agreement of what to dunk them, either how to dunk them, or under what name to dunk them under. I was going by a church, Jesus only church the other day, probably had 500 cars. You know, they dunk in the name of Jesus because it's only Jesus that's out there. I've been in many churches, I've pastored Baptist and Methodist, and they believe in dunking in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And baptism and the methodology of baptism is important. But what Jesus is saying here is recognize me in the two things that impact the external. Huh. Recognize me in the two areas that impact the external. I've died to impact the internal. I have preserved you to impact the internal. I have delivered you to impact your internal man. I have gone and sprinkled the blood to impact your safety and your ability to become a priest unto me. I have gone and done that. Now recognize that I want you to teach two things. I'm going to impact your external. How am I going to do that? Well, he told us in verse 18 one way, and he told us in verse 19 the second way. Huh? Now, we can see verse 18 readily, can't we? We can see that he said that all power is given to me in heaven and earth, so we know that he's talking about his lordship. Well, then he goes down to verse 19, and he said, Now go ye therefore and teach them all nations about this. Where do you suppose Paul came up in Colossians chapter 2 when he said that in him all things are complete for he is the man in the Godhead bodily? Where do you reckon Paul came up with that? He said, look at me now and teach the nations about who I am and about where I am. Huh. Who I am is that I am in control of heaven and I am in control of earth. Where I am is back seated as the Son of God, as the third person in the Godhead bodily. That is what I want you to tell the world. Because if the world understands my Lordship, then the world will also understand that from the Godhead I am speaking to you and the Godhead is giving you the directions and showing you things to come and leading you and guiding you into the truth, baptizing you in the Holy Spirit and speaking direct into your life. Oh, oh. And we put all of that into baptism. And we got to be baptized. We should be baptized. Jesus was baptized. Nothing wrong with being baptized. Not saying there is. But saying to you that what Jesus is telling us here is what He is doing in the spiritual world to control the natural world. If we could understand His Lordship. If we could engraft and envision what God has done for you and me through His returning to the Godhead 
as the man in the Godhead bodily. If we could understand that, if we could take that into our spirit man and take His Lordship and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us, not our wisdom, not our ideas, but the wisdom that is from Him, the knowledge that is from Him, the discernment of spirit that is from Him, the ability from Him to use His faith. Now watch me now. So I'm laying there and my foot is hurting. Now was it my faith that accomplished the healing of my foot? Was it my faith that brought the muscles, the vessels, the bone, and all of that that could have been affected back into place and the pain to be gone? Was it my faith? Did I do that? What did Urkel say? Did I do that? Was it me? Was I able to muster up enough in me to get God to do something for me that He wouldn't do for anybody else because my faith is so hypersensitive to Him because I've prayed so long and I've sought so long and I've been God's person for so long that I deserve God to heal me because of who I am and because I loved Him and He loved... Is that what happened? Huh. Of course, we do have an answer to that. Paul said in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, For I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless the life that I live now I live after the faith of the Son of God, who gave Himself for me. Paul was not mustering up his own ability. The Word said, Faith comes by hearing. Hearing from who? The Word of God. Who is the Word of God? According to John chapter 1, it's Jesus Christ. So what I need to do to live in His Lordship and to understand what's coming out of the throne room of God from the man in the Godhead bodily is to be able to place myself under His faith and coordinate with His faith so that He can do for me what is he? What he has promised me he would do in his lordship. That's what I must do. Not what I can gravitate to. I have to turn myself and my faith over to his faith. And I have to walk in his lordship. And then I have to hear from what he is saying as the man in the Godhead. That's what Jesus is saying here. He's saying that you would teach all nations to be baptized in me, to be covered in me, to go down and come up a new man. That new man would understand my lordship. Now watch it now, because you will not go down and come up in the correct way unless you've been born again internally. You will not be baptized unless you've been born again internally. To be baptized in water without the born again experience is just no better than taking a bath each day. There's nothing to it. If you've been born again internally, then you're going down in Him, going down to sin and coming up in Him. When you come up in Him, you're coming up with the recognition and understanding of His Lordship. Why? Because God made a plan where man could understand His Lordship. And from His Lordship, and from what He spoke as the man in the Godhead, the man who is in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that man, what he speaks from the Godhead, is speaking to you faith. He's speaking to you healing. He's speaking to you miracles. When the Holy Spirit speaks in the audience, in the crowd, he's speaking in one of two ways. He is either praying out of you, or he is speaking a message from himself to edify the church. Whenever that message is moved in the Holy Spirit to be interpreted, then God, Jesus Christ, speaking out of His position as the man in the man of the Godhead bodily, is delivering a message directly to you. When prophecy comes to you, He is delivering a message directly to you. See, this is what Jesus is doing, and we're living and waiting. 
What are we waiting on? Why are we waiting? Why are we sitting back? The Scripture is clear. Go and tell the world about my Lordship. Go and tell the world what I'm doing as the man in the Godhead bodily. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Friends, this thing is deeper than just being saved. It has more ramifications than just being saved. God made a plan for you so that you could coordinate with Him as Lord to control your supernatural and your physical. Now, look at this. Let's go to some scripture here. If I can catch it. There it is. All things are given to me. Now, let's see what that means. All eternal force. All eternal force is given in Jesus Christ. He's been crowned as Lord. He's been crowned Lord of heaven because He is victorious over hell. Heaven, earth, and hell are controlled by what He has done and by what He has given. Now He extends His eternal control into the eternal and external earth. Jesus is saying that every privilege, everything that is required in any domain is given to Him in all worlds. Go. I'm telling you, now watch this, because this is where we, we just refuse to grasp it. I'm telling you, who is you? Go ye, who is ye? Well, pastor, He was speaking to the disciples and the apostles. Oh, He was? Because what he told the apostles and the disciples was, blessed is everybody. God bless all those who believe because of their word. He didn't relegate this to the apostles and the disciples. He didn't leave it just to a few. Why would he have died? Because then he would have died just for a few. Why would he have died just so they could have the ability to go and to teach? And to do what he did. Why would he have done that for just a few? No, our, our modern day teaching has told us. You just get saved, sit and wait. You just get saved, sit and wait a while. But he's saying to you and me, to the people of God, Go ye and teach my Lordship. Go ye and understand who I am as the man in the Godhead. Go ye and understand that all the promises of God in me are yea and amen. Go and teach it. Go and tell the world about it. Now look at Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore being justified. Who's he talking about? Is Paul talking about the apostles and the disciples here? No, he's talking to the people at Rome. He's saying you're justified. We have a legitimate, now watch me now, reason upon which to base our faith. He said being justified by faith, which is the gift of God, the man that man can use Jesus Christ as both the substance and an evidence of their faith for the reason of being called the absolute righteousness of God. Now from that justification by faith, you have a foundation, a reason. You have faith as the mechanism. From those two, we have peace. Now look at what the Scripture said. I didn't say it. He said we have peace, prosperity, with God through our Lord. Why would it be through our Lord? Because it is at the name of Jesus Christ, the exalted one, that every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It is at the exalted name of Jesus Christ that we confess that He is Lord to the salvation of God. It is from that Lordship that we control the natural and the spiritual because in Him we can place spiritual things and natural things at complete peace. Oh my God, what a knowledge. Huh? What an idea. 
What a thought Paul is giving. You have something to base his lordship upon. Well, what is that, Pastor? What is it that you're basing it upon? Well, Jesus, who was Christ, who became the high priest, he died for our healing. He was put in the tomb for our preservation. He was delivered as the victoriously anointed Christ over death and the hell. So hell is at His control. He became the high priest who sprinkled the blood for your absolute assurance of safety in the heavenly domain. And now He has become Lord. Your faith of justification or what you believed has brought you total peace. How did He do it, Pastor? Because through His Lordship, He became the complete person of dominion and control over both of the natural and the spiritual. Now watch this. How did He do that, Mike? Well, Paul tells you. Isn't this amazing what Paul will tell you if you just look? Paul said he was Lord, who was also Jesus in Christ. He is Lord, who was also Jesus and Christ. Now what did he do as Jesus, need I tell you again? What did he do as Christ, need I tell you again? Those two things were the steps that brought about the benefit of Him being high priest and making you absolute safe in the spiritual world. Then they stepped over and put you in dominion in both the natural and the spiritual world. Paul said that we would reign in life because of what Christ Jesus did. We would reign in life. Now look at it. He's Jesus Christ. Now, Paul refers to Him as our Lord, and it covers all of the spectrum of His work. Our faith has been placed under the peace of the control of His Lordship. Think about that. Your faith is placed under the peace of the control of His word Lordship. That faith has brought us into the six phases of salvation. Now look at Romans 5.11. He said, and not only so, but we also joy in God. Huh? What? Wait a minute. Hold on now. Stop. What's my next line? What's the song? Stop. What is it? Wait a, wait a minute, Mr. Postman. Minute, Mr. Postman. <laughs> Stop and wait a second here. Because you've got to understand what the Scripture's saying. Stop here and look at it. And not only so, but we also joy in God. Now isn't that amazing? Because when he talked in Matthew chapter 28, and he said, go into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, who is he talking about? God! The man in the Godhead. The makeup of the three that became one. He said you can joy in God. You can hear from the man in the Godhead. You can be directed by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You can be moved in life to be able to know what the Spirit of God is saying from the man in the Godhead. What's he talking about? Being moved through our Lord. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ. By whom we now receive all of the reparations for wrongdoing. Now I'm about to close for today. But I'm going to tell you this. Do you know the world right now is talking about reparations on every end? The world is talking about reparations everywhere. I saw a post that California is going to give almost, well, more than a quarter million dollars in reparations. Where do you suppose they got that from? Where do you suppose the thought of that ever came from? One of my friends who is a pastor wrote the book on rep reparations. Where do you think he got that thought from? Where did that thought come from? Well, it comes out of the Word of God. 
It comes out of the word atonement. It comes out of the word that says, this is what I have produced for your wrongdoings. Now think with me. What are we trying to do socially to obstruct what Jesus did spiritually? Think about it now. What are we trying to do socially to obstruct what Jesus did spiritually? The devil has come up and said, oh, let's, let's do reparations. Let's fix the wrongdoing through something that we can put our hand on. When Jesus Christ has already paid the price for all of the atonement, all the wrongdoing that man would ever do if they would just come to Him and live in under Him as Lord. Get off the lust of the flesh. Get off the lust of the eye. Get off the pride of the life. Get off of all of the things that are demonically generated to say to you that you'll get what you want right now because we're going to give it to you. Instead of, you're going to get what you are able to trust God for, to believe for, to come under the Lordship of Jesus Christ for, because He is going to take the eternal that has been birthed in you and make that eternal as exacting in the natural as He did in the eternal. That's what God has done, but we have tried our best. We've tried our best through man's mind and man's own ways to come up with a way to justify and a way to atone. We've been reconciled to the work of Jesus Christ for the wrongdoing of sin. Now I want to ask you a question. Who in here doesn't believe that the things that have been done to mankind, Indians, Jews, African Americans, other peoples of other countries. Those things that humans have done to humans are wrong. We all believe that. There's nobody that doesn't believe that. There's nobody that doesn't believe that. Nobody. Nobody. But there has already been a way made that the sin of mankind can be blotted out. It is by the justification and the atonement once those two things are done, then we could live in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that Lordship could direct us into the exact understanding of what He is doing as God. As God. Look at the Scripture. Not only so, but we also joy in God. How do we joy in God? Through, through, what the Lord Jesus Christ is doing through what He is doing for us. So if you need today whatever it is that you need, I don't know what you need. I know this. What you need is found in two places. Both of them are benefits of salvation. The first place is the understanding of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Now I want to tell you this before I pray. When I came to the understanding of His Lordship, and I said, Lord, you know, I absolutely can take the weight of this thing off of me. And I can take the weight of what I need, what I have desired, what the goals that I have had, I, I can absolutely just lay them down. My sickness, my hurts, my disappointments, my discouragement, times whenever it seemed like you were being oppressed, times when you may have gotten anxious, you can lay that all down. You don't have to carry that anymore. It doesn't belong to you. Your sickness does not belong to you. Addictions do not belong to you. If you have been saved, brought through healing, preservation, and deliverance, then you've been made a priest, you're safe, but you don't have to carry any more the load of life. You 
can cast all of that on his lordship. You can cast all of that on to the exalted name of Jesus. You can lay it over onto him. Cast it onto him. Now what happens when you do? First Peter 4, uh, 2, 4 and 7, I believe it is. Said that all of a sudden, because you have understood the love of God as He is, so are you in this world. Think about that. As He is, so are you in this world. You are able now to roll all of these things, your sickness, your pain, your hurt, your disappointment, your discouragement, all of those things. All of those elements of darkness are given over to His Lordship. Your warfare now comes from one area. Now listen, to overcome. One area, only one area. To get into the Lordship of Jesus Christ, it'll come from one area. Now watch what I'm about to tell you. You will be able to cast down those vain imaginations and bring every thought, every thought under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. What happens when you do? This is what you say. I confess. I approve. I agree that Jesus Christ is Lord. Salvation's benefits belong to me. I'm in agreement with you. I'm not fighting you. My body may be trying to fight you. My mind may be trying to fight me. But I'm not agreeing with what it looks like, acts like, talks like, feels like. What did Paul say? None of these things move me. See, this is what His Lordship does for you, friend. This is what coming under the benefit of His Lordship does for you. It enables you to turn over the things of life. The common things. It is the mechanism that Paul said would make you a way of escape. Make you a way of escape. His Lordship. His Lordship. So, I got something going wrong in my body. Here's what I have to do. I have to make sure that I know that I know that I know that I know that I'm saved. I have to make sure that I've surrendered my life to Him. I have to make sure that I have died with Christ and that my inner man is preserved and He has delivered me from the body of sin and quickened me into the life that is in Jesus Christ. If I know that, then automatically I am made a priest after the order of Melchizedek, he is now my high priest. Once I've done that, I go into the lordship of Jesus Christ and I simply cast every care, turn everything over to his lordship. I don't try to exalt my thought against his. I don't try to exalt how I feel against his lordship. I don't try to exalt what I want above his lordship. I don't try to exalt anything in the natural above his lordship. When I Eliminate and surrender myself to His Lordship. I walk out here. I walk out here. Why? Because the man in the Godhead, through the Holy Spirit, speaks His faith, His healing, His miracle, His wisdom. His knowledge, His discerning of spirit, His move of the Holy Spirit, His word of prophecy. And I walk out healed. I walk out relieved. I walk out victorious. I walk out the overcomer. I live my life as an overcomer because I have found the way to overcome. God made a plan for you to overcome. How did He do it? By the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Bow your heads. Father, I thank you today. I bless your word. I honor you. I pray that as we pray this prayer, that people that are hearing my words would surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ because therein is the power that is in all heaven and earth. Further, therein is the power that you gave for your people to be able to teach others about your Lordship and the man in the Godhead, the operation of the Godhead. And that you told your people 
to go and teach it. And they would then, because of who you were as Lord, and who you were as the operation of the Godhead, they would be able to teach and show others how to observe all of the commandments of God. How do I observe all, Lord? I make you my Lord. I live by your Lordship. I live by the commands that come out of the throne room of God. That's how I observe those. I thank you, Jesus, for your word today. Your word, when observed correctly, and your lordship, when observed correctly, will never fail. Your words will never fall to the ground. Your words will never, ever leave unaccomplished what it is that they said that they would do because your integrity will not allow that to happen. So as we receive you today as Lord, as we contemplate the Lordship of Jesus Christ, as we just think on your Lordship, the exalted name of Jesus, to which heaven, earth, and hell bows. We can bow now under your Lordship as the Lamb of God, or we will bow later under your Lordship as lions. I pray today, God, that you'll open up the eyes to see that I can simply confess with my mouth that you are Lord and that from that confession, every benefit of salvation becomes mine. I can approve that my mind is thinking on your Lordship and the prosperity from the Godhead, peace from the Godhead is being exposed to me. Now, as you receive that today, I want you to stand to your feet again and let's receive it by lifted hands. Father, we receive you today. We receive your Lordship. We give ourselves to your Lordship. So I simply give away all of the things that I've been carrying. I give away my past. I give away hurt. I give away the things that the enemy tries to bring on me. I give no place to the devil. I stand today, Father, to say you're Lord. You're Lord over my body. I confess it. You're Lord over my body. You're Lord over my mind. You're Lord over my thoughts. You're Lord over where I go. You're Lord over what I say. You're Lord. I give you Lordship. I give you that. From that Lordship, Father, you have promised to me that you would cause every knee to bow and every tongue that comes against me to have to bow. That nothing that's formed against me will prosper. Glory to God. And that everything under your Lordship, where I am concerned, where I've casted my care upon you, will identify with the fact that my casting has brought your care. You wrap your arms around us now. Bring us into your Lordship so that we can hear from the man in the Godhead. So that we can teach others to do and observe and command the commands that you have given. I thank you for it. I receive it today. If you're standing there today, take your problem, whatever it may be. Speak confession of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I confess your Lordship today. I confess it over my knee. I confess it over my ministry. I confess it over my job. I confess it over my family. I confess it over my home. I confess it over my vehicles. I confess it over where I go. I confess it over how I respond to other people. I confess your Lordship. I confess it in me today. I confess your Lordship in my relationships, in my marriage, in every area you are Lord. I give you, Lord, I confess your, your Lordship over my heart. I confess your Lordship over my kidneys. I confess your Lordship over my back. 
I confess your lordship over my babies. I confess your lordship over my grandkids. I confess your lordship today. You are Lord. You are Lord. I confess your lordship over my money. I confess your lordship. You are Lord over every area. You are Lord over every area. I confess it. I cast my care on you. For you care and are now caring for me from your position as Lord. So whatever I have cast upon you, you are speaking to it now and saying, Bow! Bow the knee to my Lordship. Bow the knee to who I am. You didn't have to bow the knee to old Mike, but you must bow the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ who is over hell, heaven and earth. You must bow. Glory to God. Oh, blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. I speak to you today. I am Lord. I am speaking to you today. Because if you will surrender your Lord, your self to my Lordship, if you will surrender yourself to me, I will minister to you and show my care directly to you. I will give you the peace that you so seek. I will not only give you that peace, but I will shroud you in my arms. As you come to me as Lord and bow before me as Lord, I will bring the things in your life that you are in such desperate need of. I will bring them to bow. I will put them under my feet. I will put them as my footstool. I will put them in the place where my feet are over them and standing on them from the foundation to the neck. I will place them under my feet. You will no longer have to live under the oppression and the fear and the wondering. But I will put them under my feet for I am Lord and I am bringing and subverting everything to be placed under my feet. Make me Lord. I will do what my word has said I will do. Saith the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Think about that. Think about that. I never saw that before. I never saw it before. But that's why everything's being put under his feet. I never saw that. I never understood that before. That's why everything is being put under his feet. When his people are brought to make him Lord, all of their issues are put under his feet. I never understood why he stood on the devil, the wicked, from the foundation to the neck. Whenever we stand before him and make him Lord, under his feet, now goes all of our problems. I never knew it. That's a revelation from the Holy Spirit. I never understood it. We've read it. We've talked about it. You've heard it. He said, I'll make all your enemies your footstool. Think about that. All the enemies. Any enemy of yours can be made an enemy of his. If you will make him Lord. That's what the Holy Spirit said today. My God, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. That's a revelation right out of the throne room of God. Hmm. Hmm. Never saw it before. Never understood it before. Glory to God. What a great God. Well, we got to go. But you need to be saved today. Pray with me. Father, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I want you to save me. 
I'll turn my life over to you. I will work through the benefits of salvation to be healed, preserved, and delivered. I will become a high priest, a priest after your order, and I will make you Lord. And I will present every knee, every problem, every concern to your Lordship so that you can place every one of them under your feet. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Get in the church. Stay with us on Facebook. May God bless you as you serve the living God. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you with my prayer. Have a great week. I'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock. May all of your travels be under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you.